Uh, hey, shout out to Reggie, man. Welcome to the panel, Black City Plan, baby. How you doing? Peace, brother Sanchez. Peace to the fam. How's everybody? We doing peace, real peace. good, man. Good. Peace. What's up? Good. I'm not your enemy. I, I just have a, a couple of points um, that at some point we can talk about. But I came on. I ain't scared. And I, I, I am professional. If you watch my show, I'm only unprofessional when somebody disrespects me. Uh, if many of you watched, I was um, talking about some um, the concept of the universe and I was talking about the ancient Egyptian cosmology. And then uh, our community wanted to interrupt my presentation and talk to me. Um, I wasn't really prepared to talk about what they was but I did listen to them and I did have some points. So that's the way I carry myself. And, you know, shout out to Sarnetta. Sarnetta is my brother. And what he does is he puts out the information uh, in the beginning, how he puts out the information. But he don't care if I, he wants me to win. But he don't care. At the end of the day, he, he does it for the people. So, um, so, uh, Anything particularly you want to uh, talk to me about? My, you know, my information is about the uh, ancient African conception of the world, where um, that's where I started. I don't, what, your scientific points, those things we can um, line them up and we can, right? Yeah, I mean, if you're right, right. I said your scientific points, those things are, are worth talking about, but my space is more narrow to the ancient conception of the world. Though, uh, if I hear some of your points, talking and debating about it, uh, certainly we could talk about it. I spent most of my time um, learning about ancient Africa and particularly ancient Kemet. Is there anything that you want to talk about about the ancient conception of the world so that maybe we could talk a little yeah. bit more in the future? Yeah, I want to start from a general stance since we just here and we kind of getting acquainted. And let me say shout out to you for joining me, Reggie. I hope that me and you can actually can make it a regular thing where we can kind of have comedic bills and show you because there's a whole comedic community of flat earthers brother and whether sarnetta like it or not you got to get used to it we got flat earth brooklyn we got a lot of people right there in new york who flat earthers man only thing i'm saying is you have to be patient enough to hear how we come to that point and i'll be patient enough to hear uh both sides i think we can't do it in one sit down i don't think it need to be a debate i think it need to be a discussion with the kind of energy like what we have now and let me mute you for a second, Brother Reggie. And the reason I say that is because, um, you know, when it's about debating, it goes back to what Brother Reggie just said. He said that if me and him debate, of course Sarnetta wants him to win, which is respected. I'm not going to be mad at him for that. But I want the children to win. I want the truth to win. I want the people to win. I want the powers to lose. You see, it ain't, I don't care. I knew when I went on Sarnet, I wasn't going to win, quote unquote, win the debate because I knew it was going to be one sided. See, I found out in my career with debating that when you debate a person, their followers say they won and your followers say you win. That's how it always go. They followers say they won, your followers say you won, no matter who really won. So at the end of the day, I really do it for the people just to introduce them to the flat earth concept in an unbiased way where they can go research on their own. You know, if you got the truth, me introducing some as dumb as the flat earth, like y'all said, shouldn't be a threat to it. But if I'm able to make all of my points without being interrupted in like the circus that Sarnetta had over there, then I can really get through to some people. Not necessarily saying I'm going to uh, make them into a flat earther, but I'm telling you that the flat earth is the truth. Me telling it to you don't, don't mean a crap. I would like the opportunity to sit down and actually show you what made me a flat earther because all of us not dumb as uh, Reggie. 
There's a lot of us in big positions in society that's flat earthers, professors and all. And I would like to share with you what they know, whether you accept it or not. Even my comedic knowledge. I believe I have some comedic knowledge that'll blow you away, Reggie. And I believe you got some that'll do the same with me, brother. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with that. But, you know, um, since it's just me and you, we, we don't need to talk uh, that about Sonetta is, you know, I'm a supporter. I come from a different world. My teacher was uh, Dr. Yosef Ben Joe Cannon, Dr. Clark, and Dr. Jeffries. Many, many, many scholars. Uh, I work with Sonetta because he puts the information out. So, what do you, uh, in ancient world, particularly uh, um, ancient Kemet, you believe that ancient Kemet uh, viewed the world as flat? Is that what you believe? No, I don't believe it. I know it. I know that all of the ancients uh, subscribe to a flat earth cosmology. There's nowhere around it. No one was born thinking that they was on a globe in an ancient day. We weren't born thinking we on a globe. Someone had to give you that just like they gave you the Bible. So no one was born a Christian. They was given the Bible. No one was born a globalist. They was given a globe. If you was born without all of that, you would have just went with your senses that the horizon is horizontal and that the earth ain't moving because I don't feel it moving no matter how many mathematical formulas that an idiot draw out to deceive the rest of the world. And I can debunk the globe in two minutes, Reggie, but I'm going to let you keep building and I'm going to mute my mic. Okay, so the ancient Egyptian conception of the world, um, early man, of course, early man conceptualized what they saw which was the earl work on the being flat or hilly um and they were and they drew it and then early man began to um study the stars and study uh the minerals and the and the uh, elements and the things around him and nature and then um they evolved in thought early man's biggest breakthrough is egg the egg um in watching uh, various types of eggs ostrich egg which was something very prized in ancient times they took the ostrich egg and they actually um drew their world on the ostrich egg uh and i don't think that that's debatable and then uh the ancient egyptians later uh uh, they began to look at things like the Kepra beetle and the, and the dung that it rolled. So we saw the male and female Kepra beetle rolling dung across the universe or the earth as they saw it. And they conceptualized that and they saw them the round dung beetle and that became a major part of their cosmology. Mm -hmm. Then we go to things like language uh, and Ta is represented as flat, but if you notice, there's three dots underneath it. Um, and and so you then you have to look at the whole concept of what is Ta. Ta is actually also bread. So then you you you're looking at the ancient Egyptians and their cosmology. Now this has nothing to do with science. The Egyptians could be dead wrong. I am not a Mount Valley religious person. I'm not that. I don't believe in that. I'm, I don't pray to any of that. So I've been to uh, um, so I've been to uh, Kemet. Um, uh, I am not trained to believe in it religiously. So I'm Brother Jabari is my brother. I am not a priest. I'm a I'm not I'm a Nile Valley scientist. So so those are the things that begin the kind of conversation about uh, they saw spherical objects such as the ostrich egg. You, you, you mind if I cut in a minute? Well, obviously you are, so go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry about that. But well, you just making a lot of points and you know we got a panel here. And I just wanted to deal with a couple of points because the spherical concept, I, I admire that. You do know that us flat earthers have a spherical conception of the earth, right? Different flat earthers. So some may, some not. So 
you um I but I hear you so continue yeah that's what I wanted to let you know you're using a concept right now called as above so below and I think that's excellent because when we deal with as above so below and you look at an egg you're right it's spherical now if you're saying that the earth is spherical because the egg is spherical uh, then I can agree with you on that but the only disagreement would be that I wouldn't say the earth is spherical I would say that the cosmos is spherical but the earth is a plane you know so uh, when you look at words like you just did planet means a plane enclosed in a net and the plane would be the ground you know a flat plane and the net would be nut enclosed in the net so uh, if you think about that spherical concept you mentioned, you're right, as above, so below. We're enclosed inside of a cosmic egg, as the ancients called it, because no life lives on the surface of an egg. That'll be outside well, in, inside out. Here's the thing. Um, the thing is, I don't believe um, that the as, as above, so below. You never heard me say that. Um, the Earth exists in space. Is um, multiple. Uh, you know, um, um, so, because I do not believe that the Earth is flat and the Earth is round, uh, it has different viewpoints of looking out. East, east west, there's northeast, southeast. Uh, you know, uh, southeast, southwest. Um, there are different um, angles in which you can, um, based on uh, based on the Earth's rotation and rotation of the sun. Um, this as below, as above, so below. Those are um, if there's now Valley Africans talking that and using that, they're very very narrow. Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. The whole oh, hold up, wait, 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 wait. Let me say this, Reggie. I learned as above, so below from the great master teachers on Sarnetta's platform. What do you mean? No, wait, hold up. Wait, 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 wait. Give me a minute to explain because you just made a big statement. As above, so below is the most ancient African concept on earth. It means let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The Christians stole it and corrupted it into that. As above, so below is what the Baphomet telling you why they got us scared of a little goat, man. Only thing I'm saying is our ancestors lived their lives by the heavens. They they dictated what they did. They dictated what they did on the ground by the stars. They even built their whole cities based on where they're gonna place the buildings based on as above, so below. The pyramids on Giza is built on as above. The stars above, they're in alignment to what's happening below. That's an ancient African concept. To hear Brother Reggie come up here and say he don't deal with that and that's not comedic, I'm so shocked that I'm just going to mute my mic and just let you keep going, brother. Yeah, don't be shocked because uh, who are you calling as the master teachers on uh, Sarnetta? Um, there are different people who come with different point of view. When it comes to ancient um, Kemet, uh, on Sarnetta's platform, I think I'm, I'm probably, probably deals with um, uh, Navali cosmology. Definitely respect Infidishi, and he is certainly a master teacher. Um, he's not yet really uh, talked too much um, about this. The other people are coming from other spaces and, and other teachers. So some of them come from uh, Dr. York perspective, come from uh, Phil Valentine's perspective. Um, I came from, I learned from Dr. Yosef Benjo Cannon um, and Dr. Leonard Jeffries and a whole slew of and scholars um, uh, learning this myself. So this as be above, as below is a very simplified uh, Conception: The African actually believe in um, uh, the duat, the pet, right? Um, they believed in another world. They believed in the sky, and they believed in another world. That's the and that's what the, that's what they believed in. What they saw in the sky, uh, as you know, during different periods 
uh, stars and planets change perspective over cycles. So, and, and then if you are saying that there's some master teacher, please tell me who that who that person is. Okay, sure. Thank you. Go ahead and all right, so Reggie, when I talk about these master teachers, I had to mute you because you had a little echo. Uh, shout out to everybody tuning in. I came up um, when I was listening to the House of Consciousness. There were so many people, Amos Wilson, uh, Renako Rashidi, uh, Dr. Barashango at that time. Ray Hagans was popping. Um, you know, I spoke with Oscar Kwesi one time on the phone. Um, I can keep going. Basically, everybody you naming, I know about them and I listen to them. And one of the concepts that they taught was as above, so below. You can teach the concept without using that term. And uh, just to show you what I'm talking about, a minute ago, you mentioned that the ancients didn't have nothing to do with as above, so below. But why would you say that when you turned right around and said that the ancients believed in different sky deities or something that you said whatever they beliefs was about the heavens it dictated what they did below whatever christians believe about they sky daddy it dictate their life below that's why they trying to be good because as above they looking up there to heaven at jesus and down below they trying to be good so they don't mess they sky daddy up Everything we do is as above, so below. It's all about um, astral theology, which is one of the oldest connections that man had to the stars. And that comes from Kemet and Africa and Egypt and all of those things that uh, y'all say y'all, uh, um, you know, embrace. But I can't really tell right now where the amnesia comes in, because when we talk about the tracking of the stars, and how the stars align and building certain temples to the stars that's the ancestors looking above to be influenced on what to do below this is something that's Whoa. been hold on wait i didn't cut you off i'm almost done one of the oldest spiritual symbols on earth is the yin yang symbol and when you look at it you got one fish pointed up above and one fish pointed down below that's what the Baphomet telling you. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As above, so below. Everything is a continuum. It's a cosmic code. That's what the Kananga represents. DNA. So I'm going to mute my mic, Reggie. There's a lot we both could teach each other, I'm sure. But we have to be willing to learn and, and be wrong sometime. But I'm going to tell you, as above, so below is one of the oldest spiritual concepts. And uh, I learned it from the uh, African African uh, customs and cultures, not even necessarily from Sarnetta. If you look at um, uh, African, ancient African proverbs like I do, you'll even see them talk about as above, so below in a lot of Yoruban poetry and different uh, African proverbs. So this is old, but I'm gonna mute my mic. You know, it's, I'm gonna let everybody build. Go ahead, guys. So hey, I got a question. Well, can I respond? Yeah. Well, yeah, let Reggie respond, respond for y'all go. Ahead. Yes. And, um, I would talk about, I will always, always only talk about ancient Africa. I could um, talk about um, Southern Africa, Nubia, and ancient Egypt. The Asians, I don't talk about any of those people. Um, the scholars that you talked about, uh, uh, maybe of the group, Azra Kwesi is the, when it came to that group that you, um, out. But um, I, I, I think that my conception, he never talks about cosmology. He talks about temples. He talks about temples. He's an expert in uh, Dr. Ben's, uh, uh, basically Dr. Ben's tours. He's a student of Dr. Joseph Ben Joe Cannon and a very good one. Concept of what these um, have been taught about the temples and some aspects of ancient Egypt, but he's a temple expert. The ancient Egyptian uh, comedic space is that things happen not just, a, basically what, the, what happens is when it becomes, when it appears. So you have the Akhet, um, you, you, have the, you have Ra rising over um, Akhet. So then you see 
a uh, spherical, if you want, um, I, I would say a globe rising around the, um, rising up from the horizon, and that becomes the octet. What they're doing is they take an observation at a particular period of time when the sun rises and when the sun falls. And their conception of the, of the world is that not swallowing the sun to the sun. So, um, and so that's their conception um, at that particular point uh, on ancient Egypt. Um, so I, I don't want to get, I don't want to get lost. I just, um, I'm not saying it. Ain't, and then again, you said sky daddy. Now I'm not a religious non-Valley African, Brother Sanchez. Yeah, I know that. I was just making another reference, a general reference when I used it. I right. wasn't using it for you. you. Talking, you're just talking to me. No, 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 no. What I did, if you rewind a video, I was referencing Christians. You're not a Christian. Yes. You're not a Christian. Right. Bro. So we need not talk about, we need not talk. You're talking to me and I'm talking to you. Yeah, that's right. Right? Uh -huh. I'm not talking about Christians. Hebrews, I'm not talking about Buddhists. I'm not talking no, about no, 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 no. I wasn't talking about Christians. I made an example. I was trying to make a point to you, and I use Christians as an example. Just rewind the video, brother. I don't think no, you was I comprehending me. I'm just saying, let's just keep it narrow, and then I, I'm going to be respectful to your other guests. What the, um? So when I said pet, sensation of what is above I'm doing that is the representative representation of or within noon which I'm um, uh, sorry within nut that they cannot see and then that's so I'm not talking about any gods or anything like that yeah I know I know what you mean okay good yeah, we can't escape the concept of dealing with deities when we deal with ancient cosmology because ancients didn't separate their spiritual deities from the science. They actually personified these scientific concepts into deities. So that's how we get personified. Huh? Because you're going to have to give me a text that says that. I think that a lot of times they give respect to... Uh, the print the high principles which they may deify hold on but hold then, on for example, uh yeah yeah i think that you're just what you just said is what you think i'm giving you some truth reggie let me teach you something listen have you ever heard of neith yes all right do you know her symbol looks like dna it's a woven braid right you have you do are you familiar with that they say this, but they didn't know DNA at that time. All right, you telling me that the people in Egypt didn't know about DNA, but they knew how to build pyramids and line them up with the damn it stars? Had to do with, they had, um, they, that has nothing to do with... Um, uh, niece is a... We, uh, is actually no a no wait a minute wait a minute it's not your turn i'm about to tell you what neath is according to me then you can tell her what it is according to you and the people can decide but you i mean i was finna tell you what my research shows see in order for us to learn new things reggie we got to be willing to understand that old shit we standing on may be false and we may not know as much as we think we know so we got to be That's willing right. to humble ourselves and be wrong I've learned a lot from Sarnetta platform. Don't you think he can learn a lot from mine? People ain't following what I'm teaching because I'm a oh, dummy, so Reggie. Not. Hold on. Go ahead. I couldn't yeah. hear you because go ahead. It was you muffled out. Go ahead. What you think Neat is. Okay, cool. I'm glad you asked. If you look at the name Neat, and I got many videos on this, you see the word eight in it. The word eight is actually in the name Neith. And if you look at her symbol, it's shaped like the number eight. The number eight is the symbol of infinity. And that's also uh, the way DNA shapes. The number eight is hourglass because DNA is the foundation of what we call time or life. So it's the hourglass. It's the string theory because it's the needle and thread, masculine, feminine, that keeps weaving that DNA together. 
And that's what the woman do when she's knitting together a quilt. So when a woman is knitting, she's knitting or knitting. Knight is knit. Knit string theory dealing with neat is night. Both of them are dark deities that that shows you uh depictions of DNA. Now um nut represents the arch, the belly, the womb of the woman that encloses the baby just like she's enclosing Gail. So that baby is being formed in darkness just like Gail. You see what I'm saying? And she represents darkness or all the colors of the rainbow, which is the arch. But when you go outside and see a rainbow, that proves to you that the curve is above your head and not under your feet. Nut represents the arch of the covenant. The covenant is really the covering. She covers Gab just like the mama's belly covers the baby. That's your first house. Your second one is the night sky, which is the big dome ceiling. And the Muslim mosque is made just like flat earth cosmology. So when you talk about Neef, Nut, Night, you're talking about DNA. You're talking about from darkness comes all things. So night, nut is eight, is night. It's the uh, the flower of life. It's all of that. So that's what uh, Neef is in a nutshell. I can obviously go on and on with that. But she is knit. She's nuts. She's knots. She's so many other deities throughout the diaspora uh, besides just Kimmy. And her sign is DNA string theory. Her symbol is the same thing as the Dogon Kanunga. And I get into that on this channel. There's a lot we got to learn. And I'll be, I'll be willing to share it with people that's humble enough to understand that, you know, it's, it's just more information to add to your... That's your... fine. Okay, cool. Go ahead, brother. I you got I can it. ask you, thank you so much. Okay, so if we look at um, ancient Egyptian texts, we find uh, we find what the, um, the people of said about Nice, not DNA. So um, generally from the meta nature is that Nice, she fashions the world. She puts together the world. And then later scientists, that sounds like the smallest uh, part that, um, that fashions the atom, the quantum physics. But in ancient Egypt from, um, Esna, it says that Nice fashions the world. That's all it says. Now we can read into it. Now, fashioning the world has nothing to do with DNA specifically. It's, ta it's really talking more about quantum physics, not, not anything having to do with biological life. So biological life do with the same substances when chemicals hey, hey reggie you you know that no, you no. just you did you know that you just said that first of all the mistake you're making you're bringing up fields of study that didn't exist in the ancient world to describe an hey, ancient concept I did. Hold, hold, hold on i'm i'm finna, i'm finna pass it back to hey. you okay hold on wait a minute i said that I said that DNA, they did not know what DNA was. They're conceptualizing these things. Hold on, brother. The, I'm, I'm saying, brother, brother, I hear what you're saying. And I don't care what okay. text you're using because if you put up 10 different texts right now, none of them will say the same thing. So if you want to go with the description that you just read, we can use that. If she's the one that fashions the entire cosmos, it goes back to everything I just said, brother. You're being argumentative. All things come from darkness. That's the primordial sea. The shit behind your eyelids that you got to go back to every night that you can't escape. That's what you came from. That's what you're going to go back to in the ground. That's where everything you perceive as physical come from. The darkness of a mind, a womb of a mind, and all life come from the darkness, the womb of a woman. It's very, very simple. So when you look at Neith, she's actually depicted dark because her name Neith is really night. And it's really also eight as well, the number eight, because that's what her symbol represents, the number eight, which is infinity. And you can see it is weaving, it's DNA. And I, everything you said, back that up, brother. If she's the primordial source behind the whole universe, you can't discredit biological life from that. That was kind of crazy for you to say that 
you know, she's you brought up quantum physics, then you discredited Neef after you just said she's the primordial source for everything behind the cosmos. You discredited by saying it's self biological life. That should be the most key part of the whole concept. What I said is that she fashions the universe. Can you give me the meta nature for the? For let the let me let me give you this. If she fashions the universe and you and me are a part of the universe, we actually are at the top of the food chain. We are the uh, quote unquote brightest species in the universe. And if she fashions the universe and man really dictates the narrative down here, and we're made by parents and we come from the womb of a woman, and DNA is the foundation of human life. We can't exist without it. And this is the symbol above her head and she fashions the universe. She represents feminine fertility energy. It also, like you said, primordial cosmic energies because the universe can't be sustained without life, biological life. You and me, all of us, without DNA. That's all Neith representing. She's night, like I said, because... But listen, listen, you let me say this. Let me say this. Hold on. Let me say this and I'm going to pass you the mic. I'm not done. I'm going to say this. You complain about Sarnetta. Brother, I'm about, to, I'm about to pass you the mic as soon as I get finished. You do know that I got a big panel up here and I made them mute their mics just so you can come and take over and talk. So we're giving no, you a lot. You asked me to come on your platform to talk for a few minutes and I did. Okay, and I'm about to let you. And we're having a dialogue. It's a uh, two-person per discussion. The people enjoying it, but not when you cut me off. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass you the mic back, but I'm going to say this before I do that, that your conception of Neath and what this means is yours. If I get 20 people out the chat room, they may disagree with Brother Sanchez and disagree with Reggie. So at the end of the day, your interpretation is up for you. None of us was there to talk to the people who made this. I'm giving you the best um, explanation I've come up with based on my research, and I'm not alone on it. So, I mean, I'm willing to hear you some more, but it don't discredit nothing I just said. You have the floor, brother. Go ahead. So, you cannot discard the ancient Egyptian text when you start talking about um, uh and objects in ancient Kemet. You have to source where they come from. I said that one of the places where you can find it is uh, in the Esna text. I said that she fashions the, um, well, basically uh, could be the universe. We are talking about um, that cannot guard the text. Talk about me the meta nature is uh, the wavy symbol so you cannot discard the text when you're talking about an object of ancient Egypt you have to source the text look at the translation you can agree or disagree it's not where it is the conception of the world Hieroglyphics is the wavy, uh, the is the wavy symbol that that makes the sound n. Um, um, half of bread, which you may call the dome, t, and then with that, a, a kind of a whooping instrument that she's written. But when she, when you look at her. She is a woman with an arc in her head, and she has a basically a symbol that some people say is two arrows. She is the weaver. Um, that they look at that when they're talking about cosmology, that she weaves the universe. She she is the thread particles. Uh, that gives all particles, uh, how can I say, a, uh, a, a connection, a bond. There you go. I teach so about it all the time. Talking, you got it. So she's not talking about specifically DNA. Yes, she is. You just said it, brother. Hold on. If you said she's the thread, she's the bond, 
She's what ties together existence. If your DNA strands wasn't woven together, you just call her the weaver. Who's weaving these DNA strands together? It's Mother Nature. It's Neath, man. It's that simple. Our ancestors was dealing with science. Y'all guys kill me. Y'all do just like the biblical people. They come with these scriptures and then when you break it down to them, they say, well, no, you can't take the shit literally. Oh, well, what, what I, you mean I, I, is... I'm being polite. I'm very being, I'm being very polite. I asked you, that is where we draw knowledge from. Say that being again, brother. Smart. Say that again. I ask, I, I, I'm being polite to you. You a source. And then I gave you a part of the text outside of the source. Hey, I well, described well, Oh, the okay. You asking me to show a source for what I'm saying? That's correct. I am the source. Whatever book I show you is going to be someone else's interpretation, not mine. I'm the author of my own book. No one, the, the book that you referring to, no one asked the author where the hell they get their source from. Because I've done the research that the author done. I can write a book just like the one you referring to. I am the source. What I'm telling you is this, Reggie. No text can, val can validate None of your uh, arguments just because it's written in a text when we're talking about no. stock. Hold on, hold on. Here's my source it. I... sources don't Can make I... it right. The least no, sources... Sources, don't... sources don't make it right. See, what sources do is give you a point of reference in which we can talk about it. But if you I beg are to differ. the ultimate source, I beg to differ. And I'm not the ultimate source, I didn't say that. Well, you said well. So you, so anybody who, uh, anybody who comes from academia knows that I'm presenting the information correctly. I am sourcing it. What the text says. Okay, what well, is correctly to you? Because we do shit unorthodox over here. Flat motherfucking power. I don't like these suit and tie professional ass. Let me tell you something. All of these sources can kiss my ass. Don't nobody give me my credentials but the ancestors. I got a damn mind of my own. I can critical think. I don't got to go and get some other man's book from him to tell me what the hell he think. And I ain't trying to, uh, this ain't against you. I'm just telling my people out here, this is ridiculous, man. Hey, at the end of the day, I want to know what Reggie think. Now, you brought up some called the Asna text when the word Asna is not even a comedic word. How are you going to source something that's ancient comedic with a Greek damn word, Asna? The ancient comedic folks you referring to don't even know what the hell Asna mean. They didn't use words like Asna. They use words like Akhetat, Akhenaten, Imhotep. Asna is some other shit. So, man, don't come up here with all... This is a different arena, Reggie. You should email me. And, and, uh, uh, okay, go ahead, man. Go ahead. Because we speak English. So, it's named the Esna text. So, that is when you can look up the Esna text. And, and then you can find... You can look up Esna and you can look up meat. Find out um, what it... What, what, you might say, in, if I said at Tassanet, if I said, then, okay, then it might be harder to find the text. If I say, Esna, I'm just giving you a shortcut. I don't want no damn shortcuts. That's what got us in okay. trouble. So I want you to know. I don't want no shortcuts, no gimmicks, no hammer. Huh? Oh, Winnie, Winnie Net. That is... That is uh that's um that's the place in which they are calling. So I'm all giving right. you uh, uh all right, let's you know people want to learn. And that's what they doing here. They ain't getting regurgitation here, Reggie. This is a stream of fresh water over here. If the shit that you bring right, up, listen. Uh, okay, what I'm saying yeah, is, brother, I'm hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me say this. If I wanted to show up and give references to these guys. Then I want to even have a YouTube channel. I just have a Facebook page and I'll be putting shit on my wall telling them where to go look it up. I'll be putting up the as in the text and all that. But when I see that the answer ain't in the text, it's in nature and in each and every last one of them. 
then you find out the deception that lies in the text because the truth predates what, what man done when he went chopping down trees to print books and write texts. We live in a world where man make books and his whole life is governed by what's in a damn book. The book is the binder. In school, they told you to come up to show up with a binder. Don't you understand that that's another name? Do your synonym etymology for book. A book is a binder. When you read a book, it binds you with the author of the book. That's why people who buy hella books, they don't care if the books that they buy is bullshit. They still refer you to them books because they don't want to feel like they wasted their goddamn money. A fucking whole shelf full of books and don't nobody go outside and look at the real book, which is nature. What difference does it damn make what sources you show up with? Is is to look at thoughts. Some thoughts are in books. Some thoughts are in observations. You don't have to necessarily look at all books, but it is it is important to understand, to have different references. So listen, um, I... Um, I'm not going to stay long after this. I got a chance to meet you. Um, you're a good brother. Agree to disagree. You, you see where I'm coming from. Is there a question from someone else just wants to ask me a question real quick? Because I'm being respectful to your panel. We could talk another time, Brother Sanchez. Hey, thanks, Brother Reggie, man. And it was a good bill. And thank you for not going too hard on me because I get passionate like this. Some people think I'm attacking them. But much love to you. Like you said, we can't agree to disagree. But I'm just, man, Reggie, I see a lot of deception going on out here. And I just want to wake wake the people up. But yeah, I'm going I'm to mute, not trying. Yeah, I'm gonna mute my mic and I'm going to let you build with the panelists and uh, have the last word. Yeah, Go ahead, I'm, brother. Yeah, I'm not, yeah. So I'm not trying, first of all, I'm not trying to deceive anyone. I'm just sharing the information that I know um, because I had some great teachers and I've studied for a, a while and I'm not, uh, it's not religious with me. I, um, I could certainly be wrong. So, um, but when it comes to ancient cosmology, that's really what I want to talk about. So science, we could do that another time. I just wanted to say to the flat earthers, just don't use references i couldn't hear that because it cut off you said to the flat earthers and then it cut out reggie a little bit more than an observation i can, I can hey reggie you gotta go repeat that part and i appreciate everybody's time hold on reggie before you go you said i want to say to the flat earthers and you kind of broke up say that one more time i mean i mean i respect thought i respect uh information um, but I'm, my main agenda is to talk about the ancient uh, comedic or the, the, uh, the remesh view of the world, their cosmology, and to say that they did not believe the world was, they did believe that Egypt was flat. They did believe that. They, they called their land Ta, and then where the other people lived, they, they called them hill places, like the Hekasu, where the Hyksos came from, right? Or even where um, the Nubians came from. That not as flat, but as hilly. If there's a question I can take, I'll take the question. Okay, I, I have a question. When you said the earth is not flat, it's hilly. Is that is that what you said, or did because you was kind of break it up? Ancient people of Kemet and as Ta, and Ta was a flat piece with underneath it. However, the other places where people lived, the Hyksos, the Hekasut they drew them with hills as a determinative. Yeah, but when you yeah. said, hold on, so you're telling me that we got it all wrong because the word translates to flat. They wasn't talking about the earth is uh, flat because they actually has hills according to this text too and all of this, what it goes on to say. That's what you're saying? No, I'm, I'm saying where the ancient Egyptians lived. Ta Aseti, or mm -hmm. the, the 
two lands as two flat lands. So to other places, they draw, they have a determinative. The Hekasut, the determinative is hilly. And then when you go to the Nubians, hilly too, mountainous or hilly, um, hilly places where they're uh, either flat. So they didn't use it as a concept of the world, a concept to talk about land. So you saying when they you saying when they spoke of flat, they wasn't saying that the whole earth is flat. They was just talking a concept dealing with land. Yeah, um, that's correct. Okay, and, now hold on. Wait, 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 wait. My next question is, if they're talking about land but not the whole world, don't land make up the whole world? Isn't the earth made up of land? water even the water is sitting on top of land because you when you go down to the bottom of the ocean is sit that water sitting on top of dirt so everything is sitting on land and you said that the ancient said that this land was flat i agree with them me and them on the same page that's all i'm saying yeah but they, yeah, but they said other lands were not flat listen so listen you talk about the Hicks, go, the listen, Hicks, the, listen i get so, i get what what you're what you're confusing is you're confusing um, features on top of the land as this is what you're doing, Reggie. Our ancestors were correct. The earth is flat, just like they said. You said they deal with the word dealing with land. Well, the earth is made of land. It's composed of land. All things sits on land, and the ancestors said that's flat. I agree with them. Now, you can go on top of this flat land and see mountains and hills and you know you can see uh uh canyons and all of this that exists on top of this flat surface so because right now and shout out to my brother ray i see you ray i'm gonna get you in brother i'm gonna let everybody get in let me say this to reggie because he's making the same mistake that uh said he made d marble if someone want to get on the panel they got to email me and i send them a link right away yeah, but Reggie, what I'm saying is this. I am sitting at a... Yeah, I appreciate you. Oh, shit, Ray. I just muted you, Ray Morris. I'm going to get you in. My bad. My bad. Let me go and finish up. I'm almost done. Reggie, the earth is flat. Just because you're bringing up hills and mountains, that doesn't mean the earth ain't flat, yeah, brother. That's all right, bro. That's all right. That's not what I'm saying. I am saying that the ancient comedic or... Uh, a chemical conception of the world, they drew it in the hieroglyphics. They drew Ta Seti, drew Kemet. Show it to us. Kemet. They drew Kemet. Let's see the ancient Kemetic people concept of the cosmos. Let's look it up. I'm going to share my screen because I, I want to show and prove. Oh, snap. I hope I didn't show the link. Because some troll may come again. So here we go, Reggie. Can you see that? Uh, Yeah, that's one cosmology. Now, okay, yeah, I got a question to you. When you refer to ancient comedic cosmology or their concept of the cosmos, is this the one you're referring to, Brother Reggie? That's um that is one of the cosmologies. You said this is hold on, you you're breaking up real bad. Repeat that again. That Hold on, Reggie. Re Reggie is horrible. The Heliopolis cosmology or the atom cosmology. Hold on, wait a uh, minute. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I know it gets annoying, but your connection is bad. Do this again for me, Reggie. You got the flow because it was horrible, the, the breakups. Go ahead. The ancient people of several cosmologies, that's cosmologies. That cosmology, the atom cosmology, the atom, atom ra. Cosmology. 
a tumra cosmology is what that, you say. That is yes, that is dealing with well um, um get right so the L right said. That is dealing with that. That's one cosmology of the world. All right, so I'm not what I want to know from you is when you refer to ancient Kemet, is there a specific one you're talking about? Because we have to be specific here when we're talking. Because when I refer to ancient cosmology, Reggie, I'm referring to the one you're looking at right now, Nudid Gale. And our comedic ancestors weren't the only one to have this. I can show, uh -huh. hold on, I just let you speak. What I'm saying is, I can show you plenty more cosmologies all around the earth that's just like this when you see in Kemet. So if I agree with you that this is just one cosmology, but what I'm saying is it's the oldest and the most consistent. That's my argument. And, and what I would like to add is that Geb, which is the land, is showed. Cosmology. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Reggie. I, we couldn't hear you. You were breaking up again. Oldest cosmology or the most ancient of those cosmologies the cosmology the octad I can't really hear the brother okay so uh, I'm sorry is my uh, internet connection brother Santa hey Reggie I can help you with that too and have your uh, signal no, come you, you um a a shout out to uh M Benz. I I think D Mar was trying to share that for usage. us. Yeah, that's what I was gonna tell him. I was gonna help him out with that. There you go. My And you watching this on YouTube, just go ahead and kill your YouTube video. Reggie, if you still with us, go ahead, brother. The floor is yours. And you watching this on YouTube, just go ahead and kill your YouTube video. Uh, if anybody yeah. on the panel want to build, go ahead. Yeah. Um I hope I hope uh, Reggie can hear me, but um, I just I took some notes on what he was saying. First, I, I want to say that the biggest problem that Brother Sanchez always runs into when dealing with uh, the the conscious community, quote unquote, is that they never have taken the time to really take in Brother Sanchez's knowledge that he puts out there, and that's revealed in the type of questions that's asked. A lot of the type of questions that are asked are very redundant and it actually makes them lose followers because they don't know that a lot of their followers fuck with Brother Sanchez's and Dred's and mine and DeMarble's information. But um, so when they ask questions, hold on, who is that? So yeah, when they ask, is that, Ray, can you mute, can you mute your mic please, Ray? So when they ask questions uh, that are very rudimentary, very elementary in nature, uh, it shows that they haven't done enough research on it. And when their own followers can answer a question better than Dr. Reggie can or, or Sam Netter can, it reveals you know, the lack of uh, information. Um, Reggie uh, said that uh, the ancient Africans saw that the, the ostrich egg, which is the biggest egg in the world, um, is spherical and they drew their world on it but the the key word was you, you said or he said that they drew their world on it notice there is no globe there is no ancient globe you cannot now they they, they say that the ancient africans have sailed to the continents and have uh <clears throat> seeded civilizations but there has been no actual globe being produced not until uh, like the 1400s, the late 1400s, by the Europeans, might I add. Um, before that, it, the world was flat. We talk about the four corners of the earth um, and, and things in, in that nature. Now, it really baffles me at how we can talk about the greatest accomplishment in human history 
and owe that to the great pyramids. <clears throat> but at the same time, we will say that they didn't know enough to describe their world accurately. And I think that's a shame because it's, it's, it's really dissing the ancestors because today the constellations are still aligned with the pyramids and what they've built on other continents, so on and so forth. So we know that we're not spinning at all these speeds. We're not uh, spreading apart from the constellations faster and faster um, as every day goes by. It's just nonsense. There's no way that we can still be lining up with the same constellations thousands of years later if we were on a spinning globe. So um, those are some of the things that I uh, wanted to say. Um, and, and, and we must keep in mind that if it is true indeed that the Africans were sailing from continent to continent, then you have to take in, into consideration that on a flat earth model, some of those distances are actually double. So you can't, <clears throat> you can't plan to navigate to the South Americas with a, a, on a globe map because if you do it with a globe map, you're gonna, it's gonna show that you're gonna get there in half the time that you would actually get there. So there's a whole bunch of planning logistics that goes on when having a flat earth conceptualization. You can't just say they thought the earth was flat because they didn't know enough. Well, no, that you gotta think about sea navigation and, and, uh, and building on lands in, at such huge scales like the pyramids and obelisks. So, um, I just wanted to leave that there, and anybody can build off of that. Okay. So yeah, I'm. I, oh, the only thing I wanted to add is that is um, I hear what you're saying, but there is evidence of obviously there is Werish Nefer. Um, the Werish Nefer sarcophagus uh, certainly contains a globe with cities and people on it. So you just can't discard that information. And if I was pull out uh, several other uh, globes, but I can give you one for now, which is where is Nefer, because Jabari uh, gave that when he was talking to you, and everybody knows that I brought up, um, I was probably one of the earliest people to bring up where is Nefer and uh, the globe, and that is in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. So, that, that um, so, that that's what I would offer as far as empirical evidence for now. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't like to. Um, well, we saw that evidence and um, I, it was very weak uh, because and Brother Sanchez actually. Well, went in, and, well, hold on. Brother gonna, Sanchez um, actually I have to take another on phone call. Hold on. I just wanted to. I mean, when, when you do something like that, disrespectful. You're going to say that, that my stuff is, no, is weak the, 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 the as an argument. Is this. And then, the reason, I, but I'm not okay, disrespecting Reggie. you. So listen, I'll come back at another time. It's no disrespect, I got to go. No, don't do not that because. That that often. I mean, don't no. I am going to do that because, because if you're going to talk okay, to me hold on. and you're going to tell me my evidence is weak, just, just pull land? it out. And you don't even know about it. Just land, because what what they show is just people on the land working the land. There's no water. So again, they they conceptual. They may have conceptualized their world, but they do not conceptualize the. But that's world what that's the only thing that we're talking about. We're talking about the ancient Egyptian conception of the world. Listen, right. they knew the Nile, but, but when you, but they knew when the you Delta, that so I'm going to, um, hey, check this out. Why don't y'all just read and stuff? I'm not going to be disrespectful to y'all. I'm going to say I'll talk to y'all a little later, no, all no right? Disrespect. Hey, well, let me, let me say so, shout out to you, Reggie, man. Uh, it ain't no disrespect, brother. Man, you're going to hook up in the future. We'll build, man, when you get some time. Uh, peace. Yeah, peace, peace. out, man.